because we believe this is the right time for us to restart. We were actually moving forward as a nation, but you know, we have to rethink and restructure. Because Sri Lanka is a safe place. We have just ended the third year of war. And we have overcome the tsunami. And now we have overcome COVID-19. So Sri Lanka is a fighting nation. As a result, the LTT started. The yeah. Velupile Prabhakaran was created by politicians. Absolutely. Because yes. there was no representation for that community in the, in, in the democratic process. Then comes the Vijay Vira from South. Again, they were not represented because only upper class, high-end or educated families were represented in parliament. And what was the end result? LTT got 60,000 youth killed, single East Tamils and Muslims. Then the JVP, another 60,000, purely single East. So it doesn't matter whether you're a Tamil, single East or Muslim. As long as you have your democratic representation, you will speak out for your community, you will fight for your community within the democratic process. But when you marginalize or generalize or marginalize certain people and say this kind of community or this kind of behavior is not accepted, of course it's not accepted. Welcome to Conversations. I hope you are staying safe and keeping positive. A few days ago, a nationwide campaign, Restart Sri Lanka, was launched in an effort to get Sri Lanka's economy back on track and to create that uh, positivity to move Sri Lanka forward. Today, I will be in conversation with a young, dynamic politician who is also a part of this initiative. Today, I will be in conversation with former Member of Parliament, Namal Rajpaksa. Thank you so much for taking the time to be a part of this conversation. Thank you. So tell us about Restart Sri Lanka. Uh, how, how exactly will this help our economy? Well, we all know that after Corona, after COVID-19, uh, entire worldwide lockdown was on. And right. uh, entire world economy is affected. And uh, now we believe this is a time as a nation uh, that we have to restructure our thinking patterns as well. Not only about uh, thinking about ways of earning money or getting back on track, but also come up with something where you actually think different. Mm -hmm. And also that will impact, that will build an impact on your own economy and your own self. So I must first of all thank uh, Slim and the Prime Minister's office for taking this initiative after we spoke about it. Because we believe this is the right time for us to restart. What do we mean by restart? Mm -hmm. we, we, we were never shut down. You know, we were a country even though we were fighting against COVID-19. Our economy was slowly moving forward. I mean, pe of course, people couldn't go for work. The, the factories were shut down. But that doesn't mean like the rest of the, rest of the world that our country was locked down. You know, we had our students be brought back to Sri Lanka from various countries who are stuck in those countries and also we made sure that people doesn't suffer from hunger. Mm -hmm. The government intervened, the private sector, uh, the donors, they all went, went together to the entire nation to make sure that people are looked after. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, the farmers, you know, the biggest challenge we had was the harvest was very much um, on time at, at this, this time of the year. So we need to find them some buyers because you know because you can't cross borders, right. you can't cross districts. So, but we made sure the people made sure that they buy the product or the crop from the farmers and distribute among your own community. So we were actually we were actually moving forward as a nation. But you know, we have to rethink and restructure our entire economy now because our exports are not going to be the same what 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 was it used to be. Right. Our tourism is not going to be the same what was used to be. So this is the time that we should actually restart ourselves, our entire country, and rethink our strategies. How to how rethink, rethink our strategies about way forward. So this is why we came up with this idea. You know, we, we believe that we should encourage our own community. We should encourage Sri Lankan younger generation you know, to come up with new innovative ideas. And as a government, we have to help them to build it, not only to build it, but also to mentor them so they can grow to the global market. So this is the idea behind Restart Sri Lanka because we believe this is the right time for us to restart. Right. Something that actually got my attention was in your website it was stated mm -hmm. that a part of this initiative was to encourage and support um, small and medium enterprise. Yeah. And it's quite evident that due to the global pandemic, um, most businesses are facing challenges. What, what steps, as a, as a youth leader, what steps do you think small businesses especially should take uh, in, in the process of recovering? See, I think initially the government should help them uh, with their bank loans, to restructure the bank mm -hmm. loans and to make sure that they are not going to be faced, they are not going to be part of the debt crisis. crisis. 
because we believe the bigger companies will have bigger challenges but the economy in sri lanka is based on sme sector as you know so we have a huge number of young young and old people or sme sme industry is mm-hmm. huge in this country so this is where we have to come in as a government and as also the private sector help them with the financing restructure their bank loans and also to help them with restructuring their businesses that can face the upcoming challenges and also at the same time look at new innovation or new 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 findings you know put them to the market mm-hmm. help them to grow those things so then we can actually build our own domestic economy right so um you know you you've been in this political journey for almost a decade now or longer decade exactly um, decade exactly a decade right so i mean have you ever had this vision for sri lanka yeah, of course see, our, our generation is totally different from my father's generation mm-hmm. so Uh, May 27th my father is going to celebrate his 50th year in politics. Oh wow. And last April 8th was my 10th year in politics. So we both of us represent two different actually my father represent three generations. He has been in parliament with three generations now at, at this stage. So this is my first year and I I've, I've been there for 10 years. So our there's a big de- generational gap among us and our elderly uh, leadership. But what is The best thing about this generation gap is you bring new ideas, new innovations Absolutely. into the system. So this is what I think the people of Sri Lanka expect from their younger politicians. You know, this is what they want for us to do, because we believe it is the right time for us to step in and give in, give the helping hand to these uh, young inventors and younger younger SME sector generations to grow themselves. So this is something that we have already you know loved doing it. You know, even if you look at my. career I mean, started from tarno hetak mm-hmm. where we have already thought we have already we have been working on sme sector and also trying to help for build up own sri lankan identity even when in regard to sports look even carlton sevens you know was something that we came up and it was a local tournament that took to international arena so these are the things that we have to be we have to do in the future and we have to open sri lanka for the globe because sri lanka is a safe place we have, we have just ended a 30 year of war 10 11 years ago 11 years this ago. month and at the same time um, we have overcome the tsunami and now we have overcome covid-19 so sri lanka is a fighting nation so we have lot of potential lot of capacity but we need to structure ourselves and we need to build our policies around this so the world can see what sri lanka can offer them right i mean you just mentioned you know you you hail from a political family um there's been generations of politics in your family and as as a political family mm-hmm. you know like this, i mean there's so like majority of the sri lankan public adores you um but you're also subject as a politician and as a public figure to a lot of criticism and negativity how do you deal with this see it's something that you know we all have to accept and uh, move forward and also you have to learn from them because right. the criticism is the best way to learn for learn mm-hmm. and build up build yourself because sometimes the uh, critics see things that you don't you might not see to yourself mm-hmm. so if you actually learn to listen to them and take it in a very positive manner then of course you can be uh, you can you can start developing that but at the same time i must say uh, it's very difficult in is the it, modern era sorry to interrupt of is course. it disheartening well it's 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 when you're in politics it's something that you have to accept especially in modern politics that what that what that what i was about to say because not modern politics is very vicious it's not what my father started 50 mm-hmm. years ago you know, my father started in 1970 with um, uh, vasudev nanak kara mrs sirima bandar nayak you know that time politics was all about policies and representing your own people but today it has become the better politician is a person who can criticize the other pa- other person most right that's how you that's how you monitor a politician you know say oh that politician is very good he can argue well you know it's not about argument right. it's about delivering to your people it's about policies you have and sometimes even if you don't have any sort of policies in you but if you are a good debater you are being rated as a good politician no that that does that will not make you a good politician of course politician should be able to uh, deliver what you what you believe in but at the same time you know the the modern technology the media and the modern society you know has has taken this entire political concept of politician to different level and the worst thing is you have started generalize generalizing the entire politicians with one tag line so we have 225 members in parliament so if one member misbehaves 
you know a rest of the 250s targeted on the same 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 front so which is i personally believe which is wrong because parliament is something that is there for people's representation mm-hmm. so it it can have any any kind of people it should have because that's why parliament is there you know it doesn't mean that you need all doctors in parliament all lawyers in parliament no mm-hmm. there are 225 seats and it is a, it's it, it represent the entire nation so you might get different different people coming into parliament but that doesn't mean that entire 250 is equal that's why that 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 that's why the democracy has paved the way um, for different thinking people different lifestyles people you know to come into parliament and uh, start doing their own uh, you know policy policy development so in modern context you know everyone has started generalizing the politics with one or two characters and that is something that we have to face in the future not only me I mean, the next generation of politicians uh, for career politicians or life or, or career politicians i mean we will get used to it we we have seen what our parents went through mm-hmm. but when we want a doctor or a lawyer or a b- entrepreneur or a businessman or a or a some or someone who has reached a globe to come into political administration you know they will find it very difficult so something interesting you said was you might be generalized due to one person's bad behavior yeah. but doesn't i mean if you don't you feel that if if someone misbehaves or doesn't conduct himself in an appropriate manner don't yeah. you think eventually the entire party as a whole pays the price yeah of course i mean that is part of democracy you know because you have to represent your people right so sometimes you take a politician from kalambu his behavior will be totally different from a politician from north right or even politi- politician from hambantota because i come from deep south so when i go to deep south my lifestyle is totally different so that lifestyle cannot adapt to the kalambu society right right so sometimes what happens is uh, there are certain ways how you represent your people mm-hmm. i don't want to mention names but there are certain politicians who get involved in these kind of um, crisis situation or during floods or disaster situation in a very different manner mm-hmm. so some people are doit but some people criticize it right so but you need people like that in parliament you need them because they represent their people there are communities who are represented the best example is um, i think way before even i was born in early 70s uh, this gap was there the people's representation mm-hmm. so that as a result the ltt started the right. velupille prabhakaran was created by politicians absolutely because yes. there was no representation for that community in the in, in the democratic process then comes to vijay veer from south again they were not represented because only upper class high end or educated families were represented in parliament so they had no other option but to take arms and what was the end result ltt got 60000 youth killed single east tamils and muslims then the jvp another 60000 purely single east so it doesn't matter whether you're a tamil single east or muslim as long as you have your democratic representation you will speak out for your community you will fight for your community within the democratic process but when you marginalize or generalize or marginalize certain people and say this kind of community or this kind of behavior is not accepted of course it's not accepted but unfortunately they are been voted by the people right so they had they we have to have find a way to control their behavior of course that's why the law and their law and order is there to implement it but sometimes the unfair part is you judge them the way by the way they talk right so which is i believe which is wrong because people have different ways of expressing themselves and also i agree with something you said it's not just about talk but about action, action. so it's about walking the talk yeah so as let's let's go back to your youth as when when you were a, you know young adult did you always think you'd be a politician well see my early stage in life when i was in st thomas's uh, my my entire career was based on sports So at one time I thought I will take my career based on sports and then let's continue with rugby and of course um, do my LLB and uh, get into professional yeah right. tennis and get into professional rugby. But they, I think way the more I got mature, <laughs> more my goals changed and of course because of the background I lived. Then I went to London to do my LLB. I still played rugby there. Then of course uh, the presidential election came in 2005. Then the Hambantota electorate was vacant. So then, the party wanted me to represent the uh, Hambantota district at that election. Then, of course, um, it's, it's part of my blood. And then I decided, okay, let's get into politics. 
and then now then and there you know i've been in politics for 10 years now and i i really enjoy it so it is also widely believed that you are groomed to follow in your father's footsteps it's not necessarily that i had to follow my father's footsteps i had i had many other options of course because you look at my brothers one has done aer- aeronautical engineering you know and other one is was in the navy mm-hmm. and myself i was playing rugby all my life so we had different options but end of the day it's what suits me right and what 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 makes me what what i enjoy the most mm-hmm. so i think i enjoy being with people communicating with people and um, of course helping people so that's have become part of my life ever since i was a child so then when i got into politics you know because people doesn't see the actual real picture of a politician or politics in when you look at look it from the surface it's always you look at look at a politician with power money and hunger you know, mm-hmm. hunger to earn money and hunger to get into power of course politics is all about power you can you can do big speeches being in the opposition but once you come to the government to deliver it so why you why most of the politicians political parties fail is because they don't know how to deliver it mm-hmm. and at the same time why some politicians are failing even though they are very talented because they don't have the power right so end of the day you need political power so that's why well, that's why they that's why they enter opposition all the time you know they want to form a government right so once you get into politics it's a totally different life it's totally it's a, it's a huge sacrifice especially for a younger person and i feel sorry for most of the young politicians you know who have come right after university and especially females you know because as i said earlier they have been generalized with the entire political network and even though there are a lot of good things in them sometimes people doesn't see it so this is something that we have to change in coming years you know you don't see these kind of politics in developed countries or in 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 uh, western democracies right. maybe they have a different way of approaching than us maybe the feeling is the same but the look is not the same so eventually i believe uh, you know sri lanka will head, head there sri lanka will move there uh, i hope even in the next parliament you know a lot of younger generation politicians will uh, represent the parliament from all parties you have been someone who always supported um, the youth who have political aspirations but you know times have changed and there's a lot of concern mm-hmm. that um, a lot of uh, talented eligible uh, youth yeah. who actually have the potential to come into politics might not be able to come into politics because if you are to get into politics you should have a lot of money to spend on political campaigns i mean how would you how would you change this see one thing is as i said the perception has to change because no i i'm sure no educated politician or educated youth with with the with the foreign educational background or a local educational background wants to come into politics and get their names spoiled right if you think uh, if you i i will only mention one name if you look at professor gl peris you know he has been criticized and sometimes i see on social media they state him as the most uneducated politician but really? professor peris is the most educated politician i have right. seen yes same with mr lakshman kadiragam so you compare and not only you compare you generalize so this has to stop at least to be controlled and at the same time i personally believe you know for me this electoral electoral system is good for mm-hmm. me but as a country you know we have to rethink of restructuring our electoral systems and of course uh, the long term constitutional reforms so these kind of reforms the restructuring the electoral election system you know will allow more younger people Uh, to come into the come into the political system and to represent and of course the political parties may have to change their policies you know if you look at most of the political parties uh, even slfp vi was and also ump even jvp jvp has reformed a bit to be honest mm-hmm. even though i don't agree with their policies uh, but you look at slfp and ump has been hang on to the same principles from the inception uh, that's where the slpp had a, have a better foot in among the masses because we actually learned our mistakes and we actually learned the mistakes the slfp did and the ump did you know we got the best out of both and created a party so that's why we have a better advantage i believe that's why we have a better advantage compared to other political parties but these political parties have to change have to change their approach mm-hmm. because what we see now is the internal struggle for leadership in all the parties and um, criticism within the political parties and none of them are talking about political party policies and if you ask from most of the candidates what is your party policy on education they wouldn't know they wouldn't know if you ask from them what is your financial policy they will say their policy you know, their my policy is not my party's policy 
it's two different things so you have no should know why you representing a party so these kind of reforms has to take place in those political parties and i believe in the future all political parties including my party so we should start a political school and start building our own uh, politicians from that school with our vision and mission you know then the party will be strong even up to now we go to uh, northern province or up country none of the southern political parties are representing in those areas we liberated north from ltt but democratically we have not liberated them and they have no option to vote for a local politician presidential is different they 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 will go with the regional parties vision because they have no people representation in parliament mm-hmm. within their community so mm-hmm. only the only representation they have in the national parliament is their regional political parties so the day the south political parties or so called national our political parties are not national because we are none of these political parties are in north only slpp and jvp is there ump is not going to contest in jaffna right or other breakaway parties are not contesting in jaffna slpp is not in jaffna so we call ourselves national political party but we are not we are regional parties like just like tna there's no difference between tna and ump because they both doesn't represent not tna doesn't represent south ump or the breakaway party doesn't represent not so this has to change and give more those people to be part of the entire political process so for that the parties have to start thinking different and i believe long term political culture will change if all these parties started educating their followers or their candidates from their party policies So uh deviating away from politics you've been married for almost a year now how has life changed after marriage See I must say that uh, there's a misperception about marriage I believe among most of the youth in this country you know there's because a lot of people see marriage as a burden mm-hmm. for you and for your career and fortunately I think fortunately you know it it it, it wasn't the case for me Right and I th- I don't think it's a case for anyone you know because people are scared to get into marriage because simply because they are scared to be committed or to scare to be take responsibility so i think marriage is a nice thing and that's happened it gave it has given me a lot of good memories and good things in my life and of course i was more focused and um, you know it's always nice to be you know nice to know there's someone always there for you and marriage hasn't changed anything for me rather than quarantined for last two and a half months which How is a good thing for me how was the lockdown for you it was a good thing for me because i spent a lot of time with my wife my parents and of course uh, yeah, my brother and brother's kid so i got a lot of opportunity i got a lot of free time to spend with my family i know it is a good thing but i think um, uh, the marriage as a as a concept you know it is it is it is a lovely thing for me so far and i'm enjoying it and uh, nothing has changed other than the fact that i'm more serious and committed right <laughs> with that we have come to the end of the first segment and now we will um, take a break and come back with the rapid fire segment crazy for somebody i have no idea very in there i have no idea perfect stop lot of memories so <laughs> uh but yeah getting my degree bungee jumping diving first two yeah for two my father of course my father <laughs> awesome <laughs> <laughs> so we have come to the end of the conversation thank you so much for your time is there thank any you. message you want to share with our viewers yeah of course i mean see now as a country as a nation as a world we are going through a hard time So this is the time that we should get together and work towards developing or bringing back our country back to normalize normal status. So this is where we believe the Sri Lankans, you know, we should come together, help each other. Now of course we have to follow the health ministry guidelines for next couple of years until this COVID-19 is not going to be something that going to be end or next week or week after. Mm-hmm. According to WHO, you know, they believe it will be there for many years and also the US or UK or India most of these research based countries you know they are, they they believe it will take at least 18 months mm-hmm. to find a vaccination mm-hmm. for this 
So which means, you know, which is a clear indication that we have to live with this. You know, we can't be hiding for next couple of months or next couple of years, or we can't be on the lockdown status for next next couple of months or years. You know, no, this is the time we have to come out. But when we do that, you know, we have to make sure that we help each other. Right. We follow the health, health, health ministry guidelines and stand by our nation. You know, believe in Sri Lanka, believe in your own people. You know, start innovation, build new things. Don't be dependent. On, 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 with, with a, from anyone, you know, don't be dependent from the neighbor, on, the, on the global political arena, or don't wait till you bring your exports to feed you. You, know, you start growing yourself, you become a real citizen in this country. So this is the right time for Sri Lanka to step up. Awesome! Thank you once again for your time. We have come to the end of another conversation. I will be back next week with another personality, another guest. Until then, take care and stay safe. Mm -hmm.